we discuss a very important neural network architecture called transformers. Most recent state-of-the-art high-performing models are based on transformer models. Our goal is to understand the basic building blocks of transformers. Underneath, a transformer is made of encoder and decoder blocks. Each block is roughly the same in design. A block is made of sub-attention and an MLP module. Basically, the operations are linear, layer norm, multiply add, and submax. In the previous discussions, we found out that MLP is a general purpose model architecture, though of lower performance. CNNs excel on images. What about transformers? The answer is any. Transformers have state-of-the-art performance in language, vision, and audio. In fact, it can be used to process multiple modalities all at the same time. This makes transformers an excellent choice for a variety of tasks. Recent attempts to build AGI or artificial general intelligence is based on transformers. Transformers are good in processing sequences of data. Data from different domains can be expressed as a sequence of tensors. An image is a sequence of patches. Audio signal is a sequence of waveform samples. Language is a sequence of words. In this example, we have a phrase, cat opened its. Each word is converted into a tensor using embedding. For illustration purposes, we use 4DIM embedding. Transformers can process sequences of arbitrary lengths. However, very long sequences translate to computational complexity. Let us examine a transformer encoder block. The sequence of data goes through two modules, subattention and MLP. Take note that an encoder or decoder is made of several identical smaller blocks stuck together. What is self-attention? Let us examine the following sequence of words. The cat opened its mouth. Let us focus on the word is. Qualitatively, the word is has attention or measure of relevance with other words in the sentence. In other words, attention with other parts of itself. We use the width of a line to measure relevance. It's and dog, it's and cat, it's and open, it's and it's, it's and mouth. In this case, it's has the stronger, strongest attention with the word cat. The goal is to learn this attention weight so that the transformer can formulate the right decisions. Mathematically, attention is expressed using this equation. There are three tensors, query, key, and value. The weighted dot product between Q and K is converted to probabilities using softmax. DK or feature dimension is the normalization factor. Then the value tensor is rescaled by these probabilities. The output is a set of new features, ZEC. Roughly, we can interpret query, key, and value in this manner. Query is what it thinks the output should be. Key has its own opinion on what the output should be. With the opinions of the query and key taken into account, 
the value is rescaled to make the final set of features exact. When applied on image classification, attention can be roughly described as follows. Assume that we divide the image into four patches. Let us focus on the lower right patch. The query thinks it is a feature of digit three or maybe digit five. Meanwhile, the key thinks it is a feature of digits three, five, six, or maybe eight. The dot product of Q and K enables value to see the overall picture to perform a better decision. In this case, with all things considered, the patch is from digit three. With the attention equation already in place, we can now perform the necessary operations. Q, K, and V have their own respective weight tensors. For Q, this is multiplied by the input features to generate the tensor Q. The same for K and V. The dot product of tensors Q and K is then computed. The result is shown here as tensor S. This result is then normalized by the square root of the feature dimension. In the previous discussion, there is only one attention for a given set of features. In many cases, multiple attention tensors are better, especially for highly nonlinear systems. In this case, we employ multiple sets of attention resulting to multiple heads. In this example, we have eight heads. With multiple heads, we have multiple output features. The next question is, how do we fuse these features together? To fuse these features, we concatenate them together. Then we multiply by the output weights tensor to arrive at a unified set of features. One of the weaknesses of transformers, which is also its strength, is the lack of inductive bias, especially with regards to position. Without information about position, transformers may be clueless on which part of the sentence is the noun, the verb, and the direct object. One solution is to include positional encoding tensor of the same dimension as the input features. This positional embedding is added element-wise to the input feature, resulting to a modified input feature. This is the formula used for positional embedding in the original transformer paper. Other positional encoding methods could be used, such as learnable embedding. Other improvements in the basic attention mechanism is the use of layer norm before and after attention layer. Layer normalization is a type of feature normalization that is only dependent on spatial dimension and channels. Thus, its computational complexity is not dependent on batch size, unlike in batch normalization. We also borrowed the idea of residual connection that was popularized in ResNets. Finally, there is an MLP layer after the attention module to further process the fuse attention tensor. Inside the MLP module are two linear layers with one nonlinear activation in between. Nonlinear activation could be ReLU or JALU. This is an example of a transformer with encoder-decoder architecture. It can be trained on a large language data set for autoregressive generation. During inference, given a prompt like cat, open its 
the decoder will try to infer the most probable word, which is mouth. The word mouth becomes the new input to the decoder, which then generates a new prediction two. Two then becomes the second input to generate yawn. Finally, the EOS or end of sentence token is predicted indicating that nothing follows. This is the encoder only transformer in a vision transformer or VIT. In this case, the output class is predicted from the classification token feature at the end of the encoder. The token class feature is the input to an MLP head, which is used for the image classification task. Transformers lack some inductive biases inherent to CNN, such as translation equivariance and scale invariance and therefore do not generalize well when trained on insufficient amount of data. However, the picture changes if we train the models on large data sets. We find that large scale training prompts inductive bias. To learn more about transformers, these are useful tutorials and references. In summary, transformers could be the most important breakthrough in the recent history of deep learning. Transformers have been used to produce state-of-the-art performance in language, vision, audio, and multimodal domains. Expect more development in this field in the near future. This is the neural network architecture of the attention paper which ushered the era of transformers. Code demo is next. This is an example of transformer that is used for image classification. Here we have a configurable transformer model which will be used for CFAR10 image classification. It's actually a vision transformer and it's actually modified vision transformer. And the changes are, we will not use position encoding and we will not use dropout and all encoder features will be used for class prediction and like in vision transformer, which is only the class token is used. There's also no class token here. The code below is a simplified version of some of the modules that you can find in TIM. The first thing that we do is we import the required packages. We will still use the lightning module here and the lightning data module. The most important module is the attention module. And this has certain similarities with the structure of the attention module that we discussed in the slides. Mainly we multiply the QKV by their respective weights and the, the multiplication is happening here. And then we perform the normalization by the square root of the head dim, and that normalization is computed here. And then the submax is then applied, which is happening here. And finally, the dot product of the result with V, which is happening here. And then finally, we perform the projection here, or in case we have multiple heads and that will be the resulting output of the attention module. The next module is the MLP. And again, this is the same structure as the one we discussed in the slides. Basically, we have two linear layers and in between is an activation and that is a nonlinear activation. You can use JALU, which is this, what we use in this case, or you can use RELU. Then we put together the attention module and the MLP module to form one block module. But here we will also use normalization and normalization is a layer normalization, which is applied before and after the attention module. And the plus sign here represents the residual connection. So this is the block module. Then we use the 
block module that we created to create a transformer. In this case, it's an encoder-only transformer. And the most important attributes of this transformer is the depth, which means the number of blocks that we will use, and numhead, which is basically the number of heads of each block. So as you can see here, the transformer is simply a stack of blocks. This is an optional parameter initialization, which was adopted from the team module. Very straightforward initialization using truncated normal for the case of linear weights. And if there's a bias, it's set to zero. Otherwise, we just use the default initializer. As I said earlier, we use PyTorch Lightning. So just to simplify our overall image classifier. Now, this is basically the same as the PyTorch Lightning module that we use in MLP and CNN. The main difference, however, is the inner model we use. In this case, we will use the transformer as our feature extractor. And then we have an embedding layer, which we'll use to transform sequence of patches into tensors. Then we have the usual head, which is a linear layer. We use the same loss, which is a cost entropy loss. So this is the forward method, which simply involves embedding and then feature extraction, and then finally the head, which performs the classification. We use the same configuration for the optimizer and the scheduler. Everything the same here as in the CNN that we discussed earlier. Now, this is a bit different. We created a separate, separate uh, Lightning data module specifically for CFAR10 because the usual Lightning module or data loader for CFAR10 will no longer be applicable because the default data loader for CFAR10 will generate images, rectangular images, but we don't want rectangular images. We want sequence of patches. So it's very important here that we create a collate FN. So this collate FN is similar to the INOPS discussion we have many lectures ago, which basically converts a rectangular image into a sequence of patches using the rearrange operation. Now with this lightning data module, we can now train our lightning module. By the way, these are the arguments that you can customize. Okay? This transformer is highly customizable. As you can see from the different performance settings, I mean, different settings that you can use here. If you take a look at the different settings and the resulting accuracy, the performance of transformer is actually very competitive. For example, for the case, the smallest one that we tried, there are four heads to a step and the number of parameters is about 173, which is very close to the three layer of CNN. We have the performance is 68.2. And if you increase the embedding dimension to 64, the performance has increased. And if you increase it further, it, the dimension of the embedding, the performance will further increase. So this is a one run example of one run and you can see here the performance about 71. This is for this configuration, the, the, the second one. 